Now, Brandon, uh, we have to talk about January 6, 2021, which is the day of the so-called insurrection of the Capitol building in D.C. by supposedly armed and rabid Trump supporters. Uh, just in brief, viewers at home will know the media narrative that violent Trump supporters forced their way into the Capitol building and killed five people. Uh, we know now that the only person <laughs> who died was an unarmed Trump supporter named Ashley Babbitt, who was killed by a Capitol policeman. No protests in her name by leftists, but whatever. And we also know, thanks to more footage being released, that while, yes, of course, there were some unsavory elements there, as they always are at these kinds of things, it was not the violent riot it was painted as. You were at the Capitol building on the day. Um, tell us, what did you see? So I was actually a scheduled speaker at a permitted event on Capitol grounds. So what was supposed to be happening that day was that President Trump was speaking at the Ellipse. Uh, there would be a march from the Ellipse to the Capitol and then a second event uh, with dozens of speakers on Capitol grounds. So I was on my way to the Capitol to speak. And as I was getting close to the Capitol grounds, I started getting text messages and things from friends, family, coworkers who were at home watching on television saying, we're hearing on the news that people are going inside the building and like something is going on. And that sounded um, a little strange to me, but I thought to myself, well, I'm here, uh, you know, I'm on the scene and I have a very large uh, following on social media. So I'm going to shoot a video and document what I see. So I started shooting a video and walking up to the Capitol from the east side on the east side grounds. Now, I arrived at around 2.35, 2.40 p.m. And the reason why that's relevant is because that was probably at least an hour after all of the barricades had been removed. So when I got to the east side of the Capitol, which is the opposite side, by the way, the opposite side of the building as where people were breaking windows and struggling with police officers earlier on the west side of the building. When I arrived on the east side of the building, everything was very calm. There were thousands of people strewn about the Capitol lawn and the grounds. Um, nobody was agitated. Nobody was angry. People were standing around talking, smoking cigarettes. Uh, in my video, you'll see women pushing baby strollers, riding bicycles, and I continued to walk down the sidewalk, which was fully open, not barricaded, into the crowd of thousands of people standing right outside of the Capitol. Now, the people in my video standing outside the Capitol were not facing toward the building. They weren't trying to make charge their way in. Mm. They were facing away from the Capitol, <laughs> holding signs, singing songs, standing there, uh, basically demonstrating. And at the top of the stairs in my video, you see a man shouting down to the people below. They opened the doors. They're letting us in. We're going inside. We're going inside. So I walked up to the top of the stairs. And when I got there, the two large Columbus doors of the Capitol were both wide open. There was a crowd of several hundred people at the top of the stairs. Some of them were trying to push their way inside. The majority of them, like me, were shooting a video. Mm. And I stood there for eight minutes shooting a video. And then a man came outside of the building, got on a bullhorn and said, they've cleared Congress. Everyone's left the building. Turn around, move out, move out. And at that point, I immediately turned around and I left. And I even told the people behind me, they're saying to move out. You should go this way. I walked down the stairs and out into the outer grounds. And I stayed and I shot about 13 more videos doing kind of street interviews and talking to people in the crowd about what they saw, what their experience was, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I never entered the Capitol on January 6th. I did not engage in any violence, vandalism, theft, or destruction. I did not witness any violence, vandalism, theft, or destruction. Mm. And I took my eight-minute video and I uploaded it to Twitter. And uh, two and a half weeks later, I was raided at my home by the FBI uh, they came into my apartment at dawn, got me out of bed, put me in handcuffs, and took me to jail um, while a, a team of agents came into my apartment and began stripping my apartment of my computers, my iPads, my hard drives, my phones, uh, my thumb drives, my camera equipment, my clothing, taking my things, putting them in bags uh, while I was paraded through my apartment building in handcuffs and taken to jail. Oh. Uh, I sat in jail for a couple of days in 23-hour lockdown. And then I was finally released from jail after two and a half days. 
And that's when I learned that I was facing multiple felony charges uh, for the eight minutes that I stood outside of the Capitol. Oh, my gosh. That is horrifying. Uh, disproportionate doesn't even begin to cover it. And, and this brings us, of course, to the terrible political persecution you faced as a result of you simply being there. As you said, you didn't go into the building, you didn't engage in any violence, yet you were arrested and charged with felonies for standing on the front steps. I mean, oh, oh, tell us that story. What was the justification they gave for that? So the charges that I received were two felonies. I was charged with a felony of occupying restricted grounds, which basically means trespassing on the lawn. Um, <laughs> that was a felony. <laughs> um, and then I received a felony charge of um, uh, impeding an office uh, law enforcement in the line of duty. And I said to my attorney, what are they talking about? I, I, you know, I said there, were, there weren't even any, there were no officers on the east side grounds. And my attorney said to me, well, there's in your video that you're... And by the way, when I was shooting my video, you probably get like... My arm was fully above my head and mm. pointing down because there were people in front of me who were much taller than me. And so I held my camera fully above my head and I pointed it down so that it could capture what my eyes couldn't see. Mm. And um, in my video, there's a moment that lasts about 30 seconds where one officer comes outside the Capitol and he's holding a plastic shield above his head, like, like a surfboard and somebody grabs it out of his hands and the, the people near him pass it around for about 30 seconds and then they give it back to him. Mm. But while they're doing that, several people in the crowd are shouting, take it, take it, take the shield, take the shield. And so the FBI said, well, that's you, that's your voice. <gasps> You're the one shouting, take the shield. So we're charging you with a felony of impeding law enforcement for shouting to incite the crowd to take a shield from an officer. <gasps> and then they charged me with a misdemeanor of disorderly conduct with an intent to disrupt a hearing before Congress. And they threatened to add the felony obstruction of an official proceeding. This is the charge that's being um, given to January 6th defendants, never been used this way before ever, mm. carries up to 20 years in prison. And this is the charge that they're using to basically scare people into taking plea deals. Mm. Um, and if people don't take plea deals, they end up getting charged with it and getting seven, eight, 10, 12 year prison sentences. Or some people have gotten 22 years. Total God, it's for January 6th. You were given a plea deal, but in order for it to actually be formalized, they made you confess to things that you didn't do, which was, you know, yelling, take the shield, take the shield. Um, tell us about that element of it. Well, to be clear, I, uh, I cannot agree with what you just said, <laughs> um, but I will say that I did sign a plea deal mm. and that my, my plea deal says that I... Uh, that is my, that my voice can be heard saying, take it, take it in regard to the officer's shield. Mm. Um, so when you take a plea deal, uh, part of the deal is that you also have to sign what's called the statement of offense. Mm. And the statement of offense is essentially a confession that the government writes on your behalf. So they sit down and they say, I did this. I said this. This is what I was thinking when I did it. This was my intention. This is what was going through my mind. And your options are to sign it or to go to trial in Washington, D.C. before a D.C. judge and a D.C. jury uh, who 93 percent Democrats who hate Donald Trump. Um, no one stands a chance in D.C., which mm. is why they've gotten a 100 percent conviction rate um, on their trials in D.C. Um, so. Uh, I decided that a plea deal was in my best interest and that it was in my best interest to take the plea deal and sign the statement of offense. And so that's what I did. And I confessed to a misdemeanor uh, disorderly conduct with an intent to disrupt a hearing before Congress. Um, and for that, mis they dropped the felonies. And for that misdemeanor charge, um, I was given three months of house arrest uh, with an ankle tracking monitor, uh, three years of federal probation, which I'm still on, um, 60 hours of community service, a $5,000 fine, $500 restitution payment to be made to the Capitol, and court-ordered mental health services. 